Waiting in line for Figment. Level low. Is this new menu contemporary? Prince of the Bear here today. We're at Disney's Contemporary Resort because apparently there's some new food somewhere in the middle up there. So it's your number one choice of foodie at table. When there's new stuff, poof, there we are. Remember, she's vegan. I'm not. Let's go climb a building. It's time to foodie and chill. This is the new kale salad. It has definitely changed from the last time that Contempo Cafe had a kale salad on the menu, which was actually in 2020, and we did review that back then, so go check out that video. We've been here many a times for lunch, dinner, only once for breakfast, but we know this menu, I, I, I don't know. I think this is an improvement from the last one for sure, but not, 100% so I don't know the chickpeas look nice I don't know about the sweet potato quinoa looks good cheers I almost feel like I ate a sandwich with that bite with just the textures and the flavors the consistency of the sweet potato with the like it's a smooth creamy sweet potato with a crunchy chickpea and then a nice salad the dressing is beautiful evenly dressed. I don't have to toss this salad myself, so the salad is pre-tossed for me, giving me maximum satisfaction. I give it a four out of five salad tossings. Ma'am, this is a family channel. Here we have their kale power salad. It's looking beautiful. You have these delicious roasted looking chickpeas, pieces of sweet potato, there's some avocado in here, and of course the kale, which is the star. It's looking like it's got some potential, like it could be a contender, AKA Rocky style, but it could leave me feeling like I'm drowning out in seven seas again. Let's see how the taste. I find that kale in salads can be rather divisive. It's either really good or it's really earthy, dirty, and sad. You need to pair it with dressings and fixings that sort of like balance the like sometimes harsh flavor of kale out. I think both the avocado and sweet potato do a very good job sort of like evening out the rough edges of kale, pun intended. And the chickpeas have a nice little crunch. The quinoa, it's texture. I'm not a huge quinoa and salad person, but here I don't necessarily mind it. If I was looking for something light to say like come back to the resort, get something to head back into the park for happily ever after. You should know everybody loves happily ever after. Not me, but everybody loves happily ever after. I would give this salad a four out of five claws. I'm actually impressed. I was expecting it to be god -off. Our remaining friend on the menu that has slightly changed is the crispy tofu bowl. So you can get this salad, you get a tofu bowl. We asked for extra tofu. That's why there's copious amounts of tofu on here. And then pico and the guac have reduced. You have the sofrito down here as well with just a little pile of rice. So you're not really getting as much as you were before, I think, just based on the plating, right? So, cheers. It's okay. It's not like ridiculously flavored. It's not satouli level. I, I did say last time that I thought outside of the parks, this was the closest thing to Satouli, and I think that is still true. Like, this is definitely a better tofu than anything that Captain Cook's has to offer at Polynesian or Gasparilla Grill at Grand Floridian. So, if you're looking for a nice crispy tofu, definitely, out of the three surrounding hotels, this is the one. But. You need extra, like you need to put some hot sauce on it. I brought pumpkin pie, I might need to do that. I brought red pepper, I might need to do that. I might do all three of those things to just plus this up because on its own, it's just, it's good, but it's it could be better. It could be at the Satuli level, it's just not there. So I'm gonna give it a four out of five tofus. It is amazing, but it's just not like, wow, like it's, I would say it's like in the top five best tofu on Disney resort property outside of the parks, but 
but I wouldn't compare it to any of the tofus in the parks because there's a lot of really good ones. Tofu rific. Nice cubed fried tofu. I get the feeling that this is pre-breaded tofu. I get the feeling like they don't cut and then bread this. It's too evenly cut for this to be like we cut this side and breaded it ourselves in the back. Or maybe they have some fancy Disney style tofu slicing machine back there. We then perfectly bread each thing of tofu. But I have my doubts. Press X to doubt, if you will. Well, we've tried more than a few tofu bowls here, here and well, the princess says that it's closest to Satuli that you're going to find outside of Animal Kingdom. I tend to agree, but when we say close, it's like walking from Grand Floridian to, say, Fantasyland. Level close. I do feel that the level of tofu has definitely stepped up since last time we had this bowl. Um, it's based tofu, but the breading is a little seasoned. So it's got a little bit of flavor to it. But the bowl, to me, still feels as confused as it did before. Are there lots of things in this bowl? You get the guac, the salsa, the rice. There's some corn salsa in here as well. And there are a lot of things in this bowl, but to me, it still doesn't feel cohesive. It just feels like a lot of things that happen to be eating in, in a bowl. Now, I'm not saying that that's bad. It's definitely much better than the things you're gonna get at some of the other quick service and the other, uh, Deluxe hotels, but I feel like it could be better, especially given the hotel you happen to be sitting in. Uh, I would give this three and a half out of five claws. If you want tofu, they do have it, which is not something I would brag to my friends about either. Here we have the braised chicken bowl. It is the uh, sister, cousin, brother, distant relative of the princess's tofu bowl. It's the same base, but with chicken. You can also get it with shrimp or braised beef. Um, they did have a Korean chicken bowl in days past, um, but this is sort of like the non-limited time version of that. Uh, we got chicken, some feta, the same salsa, the same guac, corn base, and the same rice. The chicken is looking like base starter level chicken. Like you just started an RPG and you're level one. Level one chicken. That's what it looks like. Common loot chicken is what it's looking like. Let's go ahead, uh, dive in. We're gonna get some of the corn, the peppers. Let's get a little bit of the guac. What's one thing foodies like? It's guacamole and avocado. Now, as the newest item on the menu, I'm actually kind of surprised. My expectations for Contemporary Cafe are low. Like low, low. Like waiting in line for figment. Level low. The chicken, even though I did make some jokes and call it like common loot and level one chicken, it is actually seasoned, okay? All the way through, nice and juicy, not dried out. The rice is okay. The peppers, the corn, and the guac, again, they're there. But I have the same problem with this as I have with the tofu bowl. Is that, yes, do you have a lot of things in this bowl? Yes, do they feel cohesive? No, I still think with both bowls, and even the shrimp bowl they have and the braised beef, if they need a sauce to tie everything together. Otherwise, it's just things in a bowl. Like, you could have just given me chicken with the rice and the guac on the side, and it really wouldn't be that different to me. It would just be what it is. Nice average lunch slash dinner? Yes. Memorable? Like, the lauded heights of, like, Bangkok chicken or a Doom Burger sandwich from, from Magic Kingdom? It is not. You will not remember this bowl two days after you eat it but it will satisfy you, and you might not be hungry after it. I would give it three out of five plus. This is the Chicago-style Italian beef sandwich as it comes with the jus that it comes with. They also give you some like pickled peppers and carrots to add on top of it. This is one of their new items in the menu. Now, I had the pleasure of calling myself a Chicagoan for quite a bit of time. I'll admit though, I have no loyalty or experience with the uh, Italian beef sandwich. I have never been a beef sandwich person. I've never really been a beef person, but I do occasionally wander across it and will consume it because if I only ate things that I liked, what kind of channel will this be? I may find something new. This is a cheesy sliced beef goodness and bread, almost too big to pick up. And then this whole thing of the jus 
to dip it in. So I'm going to act like I got some home training. And I'm going to cut myself a little bit of this. Maybe do the cross section. Maybe drop it on the table. Lady Luck will decide. That's where they give you the dullest of park knives to cut things. There you see the sliced beef. What I do know of Chicago sliced beef is looking authentic. It's given like Kmart level Portillo's. Okay, that is um more seasoning than I thought I was gonna be able to give it credit for. Beef, tender and juicy. The cheese is nice, complement without overpowering the sandwich or making it soggy. The bread. Nicely toasted, the jus, the bread and the beef perfectly soaks it up. You get a mouthful of flavor. Like a blast of flavor is equal to the blast of wind coming out of the Windy City. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like it. Uh, this is all starting to feel like more like the Lux Resort quick service and not like dollar store, we gotta feed you, so we got food level service that I've come to expect. I have often dogged about how terrible quick service are around the Seven Seas Lagoon, that includes the Poly, Grand Floridian, and Contemporary Resort. I have nothing but smoke for most of you, but this, you step up your game. I like this. I think I actually like it more than chicken bowl, so that's gonna be a solid four out of five rods. If you like sliced beef, you happen to be away from home, it's not gonna mirror home, but it might get you like 75% 75 of the way there. I like it when a place we visit often upgrades. Yes, and it's interesting to see a salad from 2020 return on the menu and be better than it was before. I guess food trends are just like clothing trends. They cycle. It's true. They cycle. It's true. I'm glad to see the typical cafe is living up to its name. The food is finally something I can recommend. The peanut butter tort is still here for now. They didn't change the dessert at California Grill, so you never know when this tort is going to go away here at Contempo Cafe. The end is nigh. I'm going to start fear mongering now. If you want that tort, get it while it's cold. But I want to know what you guys think. Is it time to actually visit and eat at Contempo Cafe? I know some of you love this place. I have been a hater for a long time. You have. I am now tucking my hate away for at least a little bit. And I don't want to know what you think in the comments below. Now, if there's anything else you can just do, Comments will always be the place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, are you going to ever see a Mickey on this channel ever again? You heard the girl. So bye.